The next story I wanted to talk about is about the Proud Boys. I'm sure you guys have probably heard of them before, but just in case you haven't, I wanted to give you a little bit of background on them. The story I wanted to address is titled Proud Boys leader Enrique Tarrio pleads guilty to burning Black Lives Matter sign and related firearms charge. But leading up to that, I wanted to tell you guys who the Proud Boys are. So there's a little blurb about them on the Southern Poverty Law Center website. They talk about hate groups and stuff like that on this website. So I figured we'd read through just a little bit of this, give you a little background, and then we'll hit the article. The Proud Boys actions belie their disavowals of bigotry. Rank and file Proud Boys and leaders regularly spout white nationalist memes and maintain affiliations with known extremists. They're also known for anti-Muslim and misogynistic rhetoric. Proud Boys have appeared alongside other hate groups at extremist gatherings, such as the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. At the Unite the Right rally forever ago, that's where Heather Heyer died, if you guys remember, right? There was an organization there, I believe, called Vanguard America, okay? And it, it's an extremist right-wing group. One of their members was named Thomas Rousseau. Eventually, after, you know, uh, falling out between other members, Thomas Rousseau split off from Vanguard America, which is who held the Unite the Right rally, and he created his own organization called Patriot Front. That guy is absolutely, most definitely an extremist and a cult leader. No question about it. So what the SPLC website is saying here is that Proud Boys associate themselves with and hang out around and go to rallies held by extremist groups like Vanguard America and Patriot Front, the people who ran the Unite the Right rally. Let's keep reading. Former Proud Boys member Jason Kessler helped organize that event, which brought together a broad coalition of extremists including neo-Nazis, anti-Semites, and militias. Kessler was expelled from the group after the violence and near-universal condemnation of Charlottesville rally-goers. Other hardcore members of the alt-right have argued that the Western chauvinist label is just a PR cuck term. My god, people misuse the word cuck entirely too much. McInnes, I believe that's Gavin McInnes, crafted to gain mainstream acceptance. Let's not bullshit. Brian Brathoved, a.k.a. Sorelius Rex, told his co-hosts on The Daily Showa, an anti-Semitic podcast popular with the alt-right. Holy shit, Sorelius Rex, why didn't I come up with a cool name like that when I started streaming? I should have gone by, like, Finley Campbell or some shit. That would have been really cool. If the Proud Boys were pressed on the issue, I guarantee you that, like, 90% of them would tell you something along the lines of Hitler was right. Holy fuck. White nationalists and neo-Nazis themselves have cited McInnes as a gateway to the alt-right. On the Southern AF podcast, one former Proud Boy who went to embrace white nationalism said he was originally drawn to the group because of its pro-white sentiment. Again, with this whole bit where the most privileged fucking group in America is being told that they are the persecuted ones. Pro-white sentiment. What is with people insisting that they're the persecuted ones. This is the persecution complex. You find this in cults and cult-like mindsets all the time. I saw the same shit earlier with Rick Wiles telling us that his social media network is designed to cater to poor young white men who are mistreated by society. Give me a fucking break, man. Really, it's embarrassing at this point to hear people say this shit. This is back to the SPLC website. All his jokes, all this content, when I first started listening to him, he said of McInnes, was all freaking alt-right stuff and racial issues and funny. Comedic ways to, like, try to point out that white civilization has been superior. Many Proud Boys like him have moved on to more extreme groups and ideologies. McInnes plays a duplicitous rhetorical game, claiming to reject white nationalism while espousing a laundered version of popular white nationalist tropes. He has ties to the racist right and has contributed to such hate sites as vdare.com and American Renaissance. I don't know those websites, but I'm going to. I'm going to look them up later. 
which published the works of white supremacists and so-called race realists. McInnes has himself said it's fair to call him Islamophobic. He announced the founding of the Proud Boys in the far-right Tackies magazine. Fascinating. That's a little bit of a history on the Proud Boys, who they are and what they believe. Here are a few quotes from the Proud Boys. Check these out. Quote, All the heroes of BLM and Antifa are degenerate criminal lowlifes or pedophile rapists. I don't lose any sleep when they are justly removed from society. A telegram channel associated with the Proud Boys, September 22nd, 2020. Here's another quote. The true minority in this world are whites. White children are less than 3% of the world's population. I think since white majority countries are on a pathway to extinction, we should correctly refer to non-whites by their true names, worldwide majority. Again, feeding into this persecution complex, they have to be the poor downtrodden people. They use it like a weapon. It's embarrassing. Here's another quote. I promise you this, Ted Wheeler, I'm coming for you, you little punk, and all your Antifa bastards. I'm coming for you fucks too. Proud Boy and Patriot Prayer collaborator Reggie Axtell in a video posted on his Facebook January 2019. Gotta say, their marketing is really good with names like this. I really think these names are on point, and I would be willing to bet a lot of other people do too. That's probably why they picked them. They want people to think it's a cool group. So anyways, that's who the Proud Boys are. That's what they're all about. It's an extremist group, no question about it. I would be willing to go as far as to say cult if I saw a little bit more behavior control, information control, that kind of thing. I'd want to look into it a little bit more before calling it a cult, but it's at the very least a cult-like mindset, and it's destructive, and it's an extremist group. So let's check out this article by Right Wing Watch and see what it has to say. The title is Proud Boys leader Enrique Tario pleads guilty to burning a BLM sign and related firearms charge. This is written on July 19th by Kristen Dorer. Henry Enrique Tario, the 37-year-old leader of the far-right Proud Boys hate group, pleaded guilty Monday to two charges stemming from the burning of a Black Lives Matter banner. So it, right there, before we continue, just want to say people should be allowed to burn anything they want, right? I'm sure that we all agree with this. I want the, the right to be able to burn the American flag if I want to. That's freedom of speech. And that means by the transitive property or whatever the fuck, he should be allowed to burn the BLM flag. Except, except... That's not all there was to the story. Let's read the rest of this sentence. From the burning of a Black Lives Matter banner stolen from a black church in Washington, D.C. this winter. It was stolen property. The guy stole a flag and burned it. What the fuck is wrong with him? Really? What was he thinking? Do you think he was just going to get away with this? Most likely. I think he probably did believe he would get away with this. I'm surprised he didn't, honestly. Let's keep reading. In the Superior Court of the District of Columbia, Tario pleaded guilty to destroying the banner as well as one count of attempted possession of a large capacity ammunition feeding device, the Department of Justice announced Monday. That's fucking disturbing. On December 12th, 2020, the same day as two massive pro-Trump rallies featuring extremist speakers, members of the Proud Boys descended on the nation's capital and, as night fell, engaged in violent skirmishes with counter-protesters. December 12th, 2020. I, that was two days before Trump believed that he was going to be vindicated in the election. So if you guys remember, there were like a number of days that Trump had listed out leading up to inauguration. He believed that December 14th was one of the days where he would be vindicated, if you will, and he would become president again. I think that's because... That's when all of the states were self-certifying. And then January 6th was the other date that he was waiting for. Because that's when Mike Pence was overseeing the committee where all of the states validated the votes or whatever. So those were kind of the two big dates Trump was waiting for. So two days before one of them, on December 12th, there were violent skirmishes taking place with counter-protesters in Washington, D.C., Let's keep reading. That same evening, unidentified Proud Boys members stole from Asbury United Methodist Church, the oldest black church in the city, a banner emblazoned with the hashtag Black Lives Matter, carrying it some blocks before taking out their lighters and lighting it on fire. Three other D.C. black churches were vandalized that night. Why do people hate the idea 
that black lives matter. I honestly do not fucking get it. Like, you can dislike the organization or have disagreements with the founders of it or whatever, but it's not just an organization. It's a movement. It's an idea that black people are mistreated in America. Every time we capture on video somebody being mistreated, this term comes back up, like, especially with the George Floyd situation. Why are people so obsessed with fucking hating a movement that is fighting for equality? I honestly do not get it. Let's keep reading. That same evening, unidentified Proud Boys members stole from Asbury United Methodist Church, the oldest black church in the city, a banner emblazoned with the hashtag Black Lives Matter, carrying it some blocks before taking out their lighters and lighting it on fire. Three other D.C. black churches were vandalized that night. Tario was one of those individuals responsible, as seen in his postings on social media, in which he admitted to burning the banner in one post on Parler. Tario shared an image of himself holding a lighter in front of the banner. A warrant was put out for his arrest. What was he thinking? You know what he was thinking? He was thinking he was going to get away with it because people like this often do. When Tario, who lives in Miami, returned to D.C. on January 4th, 2021 to participate in another pro-Trump rally meant to delegitimize the election of Joe Biden, he was arrested for the destruction of the banner. Beautiful. Police officers also found the hate group leader in possession of two high-capacity firearm magazines bearing the Proud Boys insignia. Tario told law enforcement officers that he had brought the magazines to deliver them to a customer who was also going to be in Washington, D.C. Uh, okay, well, they're still illegal to own, so I'm not sure why he thought that was a, a, good, like, a good solution to the problem, try to get himself out of it. With his arrest, Tario was ordered to stay away from the nation's capital except for his hearings, leaving him sidelined during the violent storming of the U.S. Capitol, violence that Proud Boys members took part in. Tario could face a maximum sentence of 180 days in jail and up to a $1,000 fine for each count. While he awaits sentencing before Judge Harold C. Cushenberry Jr.? Wow, what a name. That's fucking, that's a badass name. Scheduled for August 23rd, Tario must remain out of the city. Fascinating. I've never heard of a case in which the person was banned from being in a city unless they were going to their court dates. In this situation, I think it's perfectly right and just that he's told to stay away because he really caused damage. In the riots leading up to January 6th, he caused a lot of damage. I'm just kind of glad that he's actually facing some kind of justice. I wish that they could have given him a longer sentence and a, a bigger fine than that, but we are where we are, I guess. This is back to the article. As my colleague Kareem Zidane reported, the Proud Boys have had a rough few months since Tario's arrest. On January 27th, Tario was outed as a prolific informant for the FBI and local law enforcement following his arrest in 2012 for rebranding and reselling stolen medical devices. Forgot about that shit. Yeah, I actually knew about that. He was outed as an informant for the FBI, which, by the way, I don't necessarily agree with. Um, if he's an informant for the FBI, then they should keep his identity private for his safety, it seems to me, right? I wonder how he was outed, but it doesn't seem right to me that he was outed for that. If he's cooperating, then he should be, you know, then that, that shouldn't be fair game. Like, that shouldn't be part of the discussion, in my opinion. But again, I don't know all of the details surrounding the situation, so maybe I could have my mind changed. Right Wing Watch reported then, in the aftermath of the January 6th Capitol insurrection, the far-right neo-fascist hate group has seen several of its chapters declare autonomy, its organization labeled a terrorist entity in Canada, and a handful of its key members arrested for their role in the Capitol siege. I'm glad people are getting arrested for their role in the Capitol siege, but the fact that it exists at all and, and the level of extremeness among the members is fucking disturbing. You guys remember a while back, Gretchen Whitmer, there was like this kidnapping plot against her? And there were a bunch of people from a group called the Three Percenters who were trying to take her out. The leader of the Three Percenters was orchestrating this whole thing and was one of the members who was arrested for this. The leader of the Three Percenters. Just like the Proud Boys leader, Enrique Tario. I'm glad the leadership seems to be getting arrested, but it's like cutting off the head of a hydra that keeps springing up. These are violent hate groups. 
and they need to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. 